Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the new VR news. As always, I am Mateo311, and this is your channel for everything VR related. Today, we have a surprisingly large list of topics to go over. This includes the usual suspects like upcoming releases and game updates, but we also have some other goodies like a Sword Art Online VR Expedition, Minecraft being playable on the Quest 2 without a PC, a Cyberpunk 2077 VR mod, plus every company out there is continuing to cram the metaverse down our throats. As usual, there's timestamps and links down in the description. But before we jump in, this video is brought to you by Kiwi Design, one of my favorite sites for VR accessories. They just released some brand new Quest 2 hand straps that'll give you that Valve Index feel and allow you to completely let go of the controllers. They also have plenty of other accessories like controller weights for those of you who work out in VR, cable management systems, and my favorite accessory, their super durable and extra comfy Quest 2 Elite strap. There are links down in the description and don't forget to use discount code MATEO311 for 5% off and to help support this channel. Okay, so let's start this video with the check-in. I'm currently preparing for my Vox Machina review. If you're not familiar with this title, it's an arcadey mech sim that's been around since 2018, but it's getting a major update and also a Quest 2 release. My review will be up this Thursday, March 3rd, and trust me guys, you're not going to want to miss this one. Now, I also had this really exciting new style of VR gunstock hand delivered to me. Now, I haven't had enough hands-on time to recommend it just yet. Yet, but my first impression was this is a simple and elegant solution with none of the drawbacks of the traditional VR gun stocks. It provides a base for better aim, but doesn't get in your way and you don't need to deal with magnets connecting. Now, I would be planning a review on this product, but unfortunately, I have surgery coming up this week and it's going to set me back a while. Don't worry, guys. It's only minor surgery. And as of right now, I'm more stressed out that I won't be able to make content next week rather than someone's going to be sedating me and cutting me open. It'll most likely be a few weeks before I can fully get back into VR. Are. So please help support the channel in the meantime by maybe giving a thumbs up, leaving some comments, or going and checking out some of my older, highly recommended videos. But that's enough about me, and let's move on into this week's release schedule. First up is the mini spaceship piloting title, Lost in Place. Releasing Tuesday, March 1st, you'll get to fly a mini spaceship through multiple realistic style environments, like a bedroom, living room, or even a warehouse stockroom. But controlling those thrusters is a very gentle balancing act that will take time to master. Rather than just going from point A to point B, there will be pickups and obstacles along the way, and you'll be timed with your performance graded. This is a casual style game that we've seen done before, but it gets a nice little twist from the VR perspective and motion controllers. Okay, next up is Buccaneers The New Age of Piracy, which is releasing this Tuesday on March 2nd. Buccaneers is playable in both VR and flat screen, and will have you engaging in ship-to-ship -ship combat and boarding enemy vessels. Buccaneers contains both open world and RPG elements, allowing you to fully customize your fleet, join factions with unique abilities, and of course conquer the Caribbean in your pursuit of legendary treasure. Now, if naval battles are too old school for you, on March 3rd, we're getting the arcadey mech sim Vox Machina, which I previously mentioned in this video. It features a full single player campaign and up to 16 players in online cross-platform competitive PvP. So if you're interested, come back Thursday for my full review. And finally, also releasing on Thursday is the puzzle title Labyrinth Deluxe. Work your way through a maze of prisms and mirrors by redirecting laser beams. There's 16 challenging puzzles awaiting you, and this title definitely has a portal feel, as your magnetic boots will have you defying gravity, and there's in-game dialogue between your character and a quirky AI companion. I'm definitely intrigued, but this title will come down to the quality of puzzles and that in-game dialogue. Okay, so that was this week's short but sweet release schedule, but don't worry because I have plenty of additional updates to go over. For starters, we have the announcement trailer for the music creation title Virtuoso. Virtuoso allows you to import a large array of different instruments, which which can all operate in a non-traditional manner. It's your opportunity to become the ultimate DJ of the future, and it looks like an absolute one-of-a-kind experience, but we'll find out more when it releases on March 10th. Now, if you're looking to keep things to just one instrument, the demon-fighting drumming title Drums Rock will soon be coming to Steam and has also received an additional level since its Quest release. There's an unlockable Mateo 3 in one drum set in this game, so obviously it's an awesome title, and you guys should go check it out. Now, speaking of awesome titles, the John Wick-style rhythm shooter Pistol Whip has just received the Encore update. There's currently two new maps available, one from each of the game's campaign updates, 2089 and Smoke and Thunder. There's three new modifications to help spice up your gameplay, new weapons and skins to pick from, and they're introducing a party mode, which will have you passing the headset around competing against your friends. Originally, I was not sold on Pistol Whip, but it has grown into one hell of a title that is now an easy recommendation. 
Speaking of games that may be easy to recommend, the new gameplay footage of Hellsweeper is looking excellent. This gruesomely violent roguelite hack and slash title is scheduled to release sometime in the third quarter of this year, and everything I've seen from it so far looks fantastic. I tried a demo a few months back that showed a lot of promise, as the developers clearly know how to emphasize motion controls and VR locomotion. I have high hopes for this game, so I'm clearly going to keep an eye on it. Now, if you're looking for some VR games to play right now, but you're also on a tight budget, I have to recommend and the current Humble Bundle. For only 12 bucks, you can get your hands on seven fantastic VR titles. And I even went ahead and picked this up because I was missing two of the titles on the list. And I'll just go ahead and drop some extra codes on the screen for you guys. And it looks like the good news just keeps coming because Luke Ross has just released a VR mod for Cyberpunk 2077. Now, similar to his Grand Theft Auto 5 mod, experiencing this highly dramatic and massive environment is fantastic in VR, but I still wouldn't recommend it for the average user as you need an extremely powerful PC just to get it running at what most consider the bare minimum FPS for VR. And as a title that wasn't designed for VR, you'll want a strong stomach for this one because the game will move the camera around without your control during cutscenes quite often. Now, if you need a much more chill experience, you can finally get Minecraft on the Quest 2 natively. Now, there are some drawbacks here as this is not an official release. For starters, this only works for the Java version of the game, which you will need to own. There are some performance issues and multiplayer isn't really recommended at the moment. That being said, I know how many people have been dying to get any form of Minecraft working natively on their Quest and now it's finally an option. I've linked a tutorial down in the description for anyone who wants to try this out. Something else you guys might want to try out is the Sword Art Online VR Expedition that's currently running from now until March 11th. Now you will be able to access some of this event for free via a PC or even a smartphone, but other aspects of it are behind the paywall. And tickets are surprisingly expensive around 30 US dollars when you convert from Japanese yen. So this is basically like a limited concert slash metaverse event for Sword Art Online mega fans. Now I was a big fan of Sword Art Online, but personally I'm not that interested in this event, but I am curious to see how it performs. And let's just hope that the exit button isn't missing. Okay, so we have one more game story before we move into everyone attempting to build the metaverse, and that's developers CodeSync working on a PlayStation VR 2 launch title. Most recently, CodeSync developed Jurassic World Aftermath, but they were also involved in Onward and many other titles. Now this was revealed by a quarterly report from CodeSync's parent company, Thunderful Group. It also states that CodeSync is currently working on two VR titles, the first being a sports title scheduled to release sometime in the second half of this year, and a co-op survival game scheduled for next year. Now, if one of these does end up being the PlayStation VR 2 release title, it's really not helping us narrow down when the hardware is actually releasing, as we can't confirm these titles exclusivity, and it would also leave us with a potential release window on the PlayStation VR 2 of any time from June 2022 to sometime in 2023. Now, a lot of people, myself included, are expecting the PlayStation VR 2 to release around this year's holiday season. Okay, so let's move on into the metaverse and try not to be buried in buzzwords and cringy animations. Now, I have a couple different examples to go over here, and it's everything from, come on, give me a break with this, to what the f*** are you guys thinking with the Viveverse, all the way to, hey, that actually looks pretty promising, but we're still years away. Now, first up is one of these horrendous examples that I get sent to me constantly, which is the LOL metaverse, or Lords of the Land, and it promises everything from living in a virtual world to making passive income. You know, yada yada, crypto crypto, metaverse metaverse. Seriously guys, I get emails with this stuff all the time, and I really don't understand how anyone believes someone would buy into this. Now, the closest thing to the metaverse right now is VR chat, Neos, and maybe even Rec Room. And they've had both years and millions of dollars in investments. Now, they didn't start out with the whole, hey, we're becoming the metaverse, because that's a more recent buzzword. Maybe they'll never be as all-encompassing as the metaverse tries to be, but it's the best example we have right now. Now, both Google and Microsoft have also stated they're working on a metaverse. And now here comes HTC with the Viveverse. And I'm not going to lie, Vive has been painful to watch for the last few years. They're trying to sell us a concept that's just not close to reality. You'll start your day off with an augmented reality workout. And why bother cleaning your house? Because you could just have it transformed into a beautiful virtual environment. Then jump to your virtual workplace, a wine tasting, a concert. And don't forget, we need to include cryptocurrency and grandma. She really needs to be part of the metaverse. We're living in a world where everyone is trying to sell us a concept, but at the same time, only showing us smoke and mirrors. Now, I understand this type of futuristic sales pitch definitely helps to raise the stock price, but we are being sold BS. 
Now, sadly, some of the most impressive technology currently comes from Meta, and that's BuilderBot. This is an AI system designed to build virtual worlds, and it's a truly impressive tech demo. But we are currently so far away from some of the demos that are being crammed down our throats. And then there's other people just looking to exploit the situation with NFTs and other crypto technologies. I know some people can't wait for the days of Ready Player One, but they're missing those serious dystopian aspects of planned obsolescence and artificial scarcity that some people are looking to make the cornerstone of a metaverse. As of right now, I'm sick of being sold BS. I want to see this software and technology naturally evolve, and I truly fear the day when virtual goods are worth more than true tangible objects. Okay, everybody, that was my new VR news followed by a metaverse rant. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. And as always, I will see you guys on next time.